Funding for Not a Vampire is provided by viewers like you. Find perks and bonus content at patreon.com slash not a vampire. Thank you! Fair warning, this video does touch on sexual assault. I don't know about Declan. He was introduced as this playboy, silver spoon sucking jerk, jumping from one girl to the next, even being willing to help Jane cheat on Spinner. Then he gets with Holly J and becomes a one woman man, so he's okay, right? Reformed in his ways like Holly J had recently been. I've never really been attached to Declan as a character. He was interesting, I guess, but I always seem to forget about his episodes. While I would fondly remember Fiona and the many storylines she had on the show, Declan, it's honestly challenging for me to remember him sometimes. It's like, I don't care about him. He sits in this sort of gray space that also contains people like Derek and Jesse. Like, they have their nuances and complications that should interest me, but don't. There's something about them that makes me not gravitate towards them. For Derek and Jesse, I can see it being a lack of charisma on their part. Recently, I've come to understand that my one weakness for villainous or morally dubious characters is their charm. That's why I love Mark Hamill's Mushka from Castle in the Sky, Jason Isaac's Captain Hook, Lestat from The Vampire Chronicles, and even early Eli. But Declan does have charm. He should be a shoo in for my list of problematic faves under that criteria. Why don't I feel attached to Declan? I don't think it's because of his short run on the show. Characters like Rasha, Vula, and Tori still hold real estate in my mind regardless of how many episodes of the show they are in. Hell, I even feel attached to characters like Baz and VJ, even though they got little screen time or moments dedicated to themselves instead of enhancing other characters. But Declan, I just can't say the same. Like, from the beginning, I just hate him. He's immediately disparaging a Peter. Not just seeing him as an obstacle to getting with Mia, but constantly mocking him for being low class. Not knowing what to do with oysters, being bored with snobby schmooze fests, not so subtly suggesting that Peter is somehow inherently inferior to Declan because of his societal standing. Dude has it out for Peter so much that he forces Peter to make a fool of himself in front of the people Mia is trying to form ties with. Then when he sets his eyes on Holly J, how does he think to woo her? get tickets to a group he never thought to ask if she liked them first, and ask her to find someone to cover for the one night she basically just told the whole school that she'd be busy for. It doesn't matter that her school presidential and business duties are calling, they're apparently all secondary to a first date with Declan Coyne. And you know what? It's pretty messed up that Declan locked Holly J in a sound booth to force her to listen to his this is my real feeling speech. And am I the only one who reads Big Fat Liar Flags when he tells Holly J that he came to her work event just to spend every possible moment with her? I thought you were supposed to be at the Tessa's concert. I couldn't wait. For what? To spend every possible moment with you. Not only does he say it in the least sincere way, but he was only doing it because Anya said it'd work better than a grand gesture. Even if he feels truly for Holly J, he's still acting as though the point is to win her. Not so much because he actually values her or that he wants them to share a life together. She's just another girl to be gotten, even if this time he won't philander. Boy, and the how much do I have to spend for you to do what I ask is such a messed up line, but it sounds so natural coming from Declan. Up until that conversation, I was open to the idea that Declan was just helping out Holly J financially out of love. I was willing to see it as Declan wanting Holly J to have everything she wants. And because a job was possibly going to prevent her from putting her efforts into getting into her dream school, he wanted to clear the path for her. That maybe Fiona's red flags were going off for no reason when she assessed the situation as Declan buying her girl friendship. But Declan really put a stop to that. Suddenly what seemed like a sweet gesture done for Holiday's benefit is revealed to be just another expression of Declan putting himself first always. Holly J is so poor that she needs to get a job and thus limit her availability? Throw money at it! Declan wants to spend more time with Holly J, but he doesn't just visit her in Toronto. He books entire flights in a hotel to whisk her away to visit Yale with him without making sure if she could actually take the time out to go. But Holly J can't go because of SATs? Just reschedule them. Holly J's family is moving that weekend? Throw money at it and hire movers. No need to consider why Holly J might not want to do those things. No reason to investigate why Holly J thinks it's not that easy, even though Declan does. 
Nope, just throw money at her until he gets what he wants. Consistently, Declan never considers other people. To him, people only exist to do what he wants or to be bought into doing it. From Jane to the mountain of girlfriends he had before, and even Holly J. He wanted Holly J to be a part of his dreams, but wouldn't listen to her perspective on the plans he made for her. I believe Holly J when she accuses him of wanting her to be a part of his plan so much to the point that he'd been disregarding her own dreams. And of course, that is still a feature of his character when he returns to the show in season 10B. Of course he didn't come back to Toronto for a silly high school theater award show. He came back for Holly J. And honestly, he hasn't changed a bit. What did he fix about himself or how he saw Holly J? What exactly would be different this time if she gave him another chance? Will he set up a charity to pour money into to help get scholarships for inner city kids because he throws money at all his problems? And this isn't the exact same thing, how? So basically, nothing at all has changed. Declan doesn't understand why Holly J felt like he was buying her, and the only thing that matters is that Declan missed Holly J. Wow, redemption arc of the century right there, folks. And then it just gets worse. Declan knows she's with Saf now. It's not serious, but they seem really into each other. Declan thanks Holly J in his speech, then purposely separates her from Sav at his party to declare his love for her. But Holly J makes it clear that she, one, doesn't want to hear it, and two, nothing is going to happen between them that night. A pretty clear rejection, right? And yet, even when he puts the moves on her, even as Holly J says no, they agreed nothing would happen that night, Declan insists that what he is doing is right. He puts no weight in Holly J's words. He thinks of the matter as Holly J simply needing to be convinced. He just loves her so much, won't she please just give in and accept him? Even if Holly J doesn't see it as such, it looks to me like textbook assault. She said no. She never wanted them to go as far as they did. It doesn't matter that Holly J still loves him for some reason. It doesn't matter that she eventually capitulated and stopped resisting. It's clear as day that she gave consent under duress. It wasn't her full, enthusiastic yes. And Declan was the one who laid on the pressure to the point of not taking no as an answer. I think the worst part to me about the whole thing is Declan's reaction. He never once felt guilty for what he did or how he made Holly J feel. No, Declan just felt bad that Holly J maybe thought he raped her. And even after she clarified that she didn't think he did, what was his response? An admission that he still pressured her to do something she didn't actually want? An apology for again treating Holly J as a means to a selfish end? Nope, just a, well, I'm glad you don't think I raped you. And asking her, do you hate me? <laughs> this, this guy, man, I always forget the details of his episodes and I see why. I don't want to think about him. At the end of the day, Declan is only ever concerned about himself and never tries empathy. In his mind, you can get anything you want if you throw up enough money and apply enough pressure to it. He seems incapable of introspection, or at least uninterested. People around him aren't to be heard, but instead to be commanded as he pleases. He just doesn't care. And it's not just in this one episode or an isolated storyline. It's a consistent part of him throughout his whole time on the show. And you know, that's just not fun for me to watch. There's like nothing to him except for his selfishness. Man, I really hope Holly J never got back with him and kept her distance from him while she was at Yale. I just can't trust that Declan will ever change, and he has enough money and social power that he honestly likely will never be forced to. He'll just be the same selfish ringleader who sees everyone else as animals that exist only to perform tricks in his private circus. Thank you very much for tuning into my video. If you want to support me, find me at patreon.com slash notavampire. Uh, here's my Mastodon link. That's the, probably the best place to consistently keep up with me or the community posts. And actually, here's my Tumblr to see all the things that I reblog and uh, all that fun stuff. A lot of cat stuff, of course, because it's me. Thank you very much again, and until next time.